Welcome to this first lesson on the new and amazing Material X Llama shading system. And in this lesson, we're going to be taking an overview look through the various Llama nodes that ship with Renderman. So Llama was developed by Industrial Light and Magic and has been battle tested from pretty much everything they've done since Solo. And now you guys have the same material technology to really push your layered materials to the next level. And Llama is an extremely powerful layering system. And when you're working with Llama, you should really treat the layers of your material in the same way as you would do if they were being made in the real world. And we've touched on this in previous lessons as well. But this ethos and approach in turn will allow you to really level up the quality of your renders and will also give you full creative and realistic control over your layers and materials. Okay, so let's get started and actually get some Llama materials going. So the first thing I need to do is I need to attach a Llama surface to my geometry. So I'm going to select my teapot and then if I come up here to the Pixar surface icon and I right click on it, down here you can see I've got Llama surface. So if I just select it, now what happens is that it's applied this Llama surface to my teapot and if I just start up an IPR render, you can see what that looks like. Well, as you can see, that's not very impressive. But what you have to understand is that this Llama surface is basically like the mothership of your Llama network. It's the node that's at the end of your material chain. And like I said before, this is the one that gets applied to your geometry. So at the minute, it doesn't look very impressive. So let's just throw a diffuse into it. So if I just expand it out a little bit and I move it over, if I then start to type Llama diffuse, you can see here that I now have a Llama diffuse. And what I want to do to start with is I plug the out color into my material front. And what you can see here is the result of my Llama diffuse. And if I just come back to the Llama surface, you can see here that we've got a couple of options. The first one is material sides. And so if you had geometry that had two sides to it, so you want to do a shield and on the front face it was metal and on the inside was leather, or you were doing eggshells or, you know, kind of two-sided materials, well, this is where you can plug in a material for the front and for the back side of your geometry. But in this instance, we're only using one side, and so therefore it treats it as the material front. And this is where we've then taken the out color and plugged it into the material front input. And then we have a number of options that we can switch on and off as we need to. And again, like I said, we're going to have a look at these. But, you know, this one here allows you to turn on opacity, which is used for dielectric layering. And then here we have subsurface that you need to turn on if you're working with subsurface materials. And again, here we have interiors. So if you're doing things like foggy glass or muddy liquids, then this needs to be switched on. But by default, these are off because RenderMan wants to render as fast as it can by default. And so if you need these extra parameters, you need to check them on. So that was a brief overview of the Llama surface and let's just have a quick look at the Llama diffuse. <laughs> 